Hey guys and welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to be doing a live video where I make this pattern. This is Simplicity 6588. It is from 1974. Holy moly. So that is 44. <laughs> yeah, 44. So I want to make this skirt for my daughter. I think, I don't think she would like the little suspender one, but we'll just stick with the regular skirt. We're going on vacation soon, so it's getting cold here, but I think that she could wear it on vacation. So this is the print that I've been hanging on to. When you find a pattern, of course, you're gonna make sure it has the right size. So this says a size 8, and that's what size she is right now. And then it'll say the waist circumference. Honestly, I don't even know what her waist circumference is. So I'm hoping that it will fit. Then we're going to look at the back. So the back is going to show you all the different variations. So for pattern 1 and 2, I'm going to need, I'm going to make that. So on the front, it says one and two so you can see these are all the same skirts and then all the same pants and then some have the suspenders and some don't so they're just they're just like the same pattern but they're just different variations so I'm going to look at the pattern and it will show me the different sizes so size 7 8 10 12 and 14 so I'm going to stick with a size 8 and it will tell us under the size 8 skirt, skirt with detached bib, we need 1 and 3 quarters yard. And then I think you can have different lengths. So I think I have enough. And sometimes they kind of overshoot how much you need. So, oh, and they have a fancy ruler at the top in case you don't already have one. All right, so let's open this up. Um, I got it from the second hand store. So it could be used. So it looks like it's been used. So hopefully all the pieces are there. All right, so here is the instructions. And on the pattern, it will have different diagrams as to how you should place your fabric or the best way to place your fabric so that you can have the maximum use of your fabric. So let's see if our pieces are here. Um, so for skirt view one and two, we're going to need A and B and then C. So we need the waistband, skirt back, and skirt front. Okay, what do we got here? Waistband, piece C. So I think this one it's it's only a size 8 so um, like they had the different sizes on the back so you can get patterns that have multiple sizes and then you would cut along the line that was to your specifications but this one because it is only a size 8 they only give you a size 8 and I'm not sure if that's because you know maybe it's cheaper to get a size rather than have like a bunch of sizes I'm not sure but that is just how this pattern is going to do it. So I have the C, and then I see that there's a B here and an A. Okay. I'll place all those other pieces to the side. Looks like that this hasn't been used. So you don't have to cut it out right away if you want to just put this on your fabric and then cut around it with your fabric. That's totally fine too. 
Um, if you're looking at the fabric, you will see that there is suggested placement. So place on the straight grain, which would be, you know, if you had a stretch fabric, then that would be the non-stretch way, I think. Okay, so this is the skirt back. It says cut two. It says cutting line, so the dark line, that right there would be your seam allowance. So they suggest a 5 8 seam allowance. So yeah, there will be four separate pieces. This one won't be cut on the fold. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out two of the C, the A pieces, and then two of my B pieces. And then this one, I think, is cut one. This is center back line. We'll look at the instructions after to make sure that we're doing it correctly. Um, with my fabric, because it's directional, I'm going to ignore this and hopefully that doesn't matter because it is cotton but I wanted of course the you know I want them to be like that so you know from the waist so that it looks the cutest so when you're cutting out your pattern make sure you cut out all the little notches that are around the pattern piece so those little diamonds there could be double diamonds so just make sure because that will help the assembly of your garment once you go to put it together. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about um, the sewing notions. So notions are all the little bits and bobs, I guess you could call it, that you are going to use to create your skirt or your garment. So of course thread, seam binding, stretch lace, a zipper, and some buttons. So depending on which one you're using, it will just have it right there. So for the skirt, I'm going to be using a zipper. So I have one of those to match the fabric. And then I don't entirely know if I'm going to be, if I'm going to need this, but I have some hooks and eyes and then some little sew-in snaps. So I'll see what happens, but those are like the little loops that, you know, either you have on a dress, sort of like a bra strap, you know, like you just, so we'll see um, what happens, but that is for the waist. And we will look for the skirt. So this is the skirt. So I'll put the two back pieces together and then I'll put the two front pieces together. But it says that I need to sew up to the medium dot. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the back piece. Okay, so, so I like to keep the pattern on my pieces before I get started just in case there's any more information I need to know. So according to the pattern it says to sew up the center back up until the medium dot. So this is that medium dot so I'm just going to take some chalk and I'll just mark that right there. Or I guess I'll I'll have to mark it underneath. And then here is where we're going to place the zipper. So now I'll take off the pattern. And I will put all my pins back in my handy homemade pin magnet holder. If you haven't seen this tutorial, you should check it out. So easy. Okay, so then I will take it and put it with the right sides together.
and there are the little notches on the pattern so you should always make sure you cut those out so that everything lines up perfectly. And then where that marking is. That's where we're going to sew up to. And it's going to be 5 8 seam allowance, which I think is absolutely ridiculously huge. And I don't understand the whole thought process. Like, isn't like a half an inch good enough? But I think they do it just in case you want to let it out or let, I don't know. So we will do that. So I just had to measure where 5 8 seam allowance was on my machine. And then I'm just going to sew until I hit that mark. And then I just took the front of the skirt and put that with the right sides together, lining up all my little notches, and I'm going to do a seam all the way up to the top of the skirt. So I'm going to now take the center back seam and I'm going to press it, because I'm pretty sure that's what I need to do. And just so you know, I've never done this before. Um, I've watched a lot of videos on, I mean, I've made patterns before, but I, I kind of just do my own thing. <laughs> so I'm actually trying to do it the way that the pattern is saying to do it. So I'm doing it with the actual instructions. So sometimes I just use patterns as guides, like I need to make this, so I'm just going to cut out the pieces and then make whatever I was making. <laughs> okay, so that is going to be where the zipper goes. So the zipper says that it has to be a half inch from the top. Okay, so I'm going to take my zipper go like that. My zipper is too long, but that's okay because I can cut it down. Put my zipper up at the top and then it says it needs to be a half inch from the top of the skirt. So you can line it up perfectly or just offset it a bit. It doesn't say that it needs to be an invisible zipper. So I guess we'll just do that. And then I guess the zipper will just kind of split the fabric as it goes down. We shall see. If you have some double-sided tape, now is a really good time to use it. I should find mine. So this is actually the easiest way to install a zipper, in my opinion. So all you do is uh, a top stitch. So you're just going to top stitch along the zipper teeth and then once you get to the bottom of the zipper where the fabric is sewn together, you will turn it at a 90 degrees and do a few stitches, go to the other side of the zipper and then turn it again 90 degrees and then sew back up the zipper. And then that's it. Your zipper is installed. So if you've never worked with zippers before, this is a great a way to install a zipper and it's very easy and you don't have to worry about you know you don't have to stress because I know that in the beginning when I first started working with zippers I was a little bit intimidated that I wouldn't be able to do it properly but they are very easy to install especially with this method okay so I had to take it apart once on the one side because it got a little bit pushed down and then reposition it um, but this is, this is pretty good, considering it's my first time. So there's the zipper, 
this is what it looks like on the inside. I guess that's okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm always used to hiding everything, but that's how it goes. That's how the pattern goes. All right, so now we're gonna work on the waistband. So I'm going to grab my ironing board, um, take the two skirt pieces and then sew them the back to the front, the front to the back, you know. I will take one piece, lay it down, and then take the other piece, and then I'll just line up my little notches. So, so I would love to talk to you guys about um, dislike button. <laughs> you know, I make tutorials because I love doing it. And when I like a tutorial, I will like the button. But then I, if I don't like the tutorial, I won't put an unlike. And I, I think that for tutorials, the, the unlike button should be should be eliminated because just because I do a tutorial a certain way or just because I make a project a certain way doesn't mean that that is the only way because there's a million ways to do one thing so if you don't make you know your garments the exact same way that I do it doesn't mean that I'm doing it wrong and it doesn't mean that you're doing them wrong so I just think that it's kind of mean to dislike a video just because you didn't like how I did something, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna, and now I'm gonna get dislikes on this video. <laughs> Which is okay, because I usually get dislikes on videos that aren't pretty straightforward when I'm doing something like a vlog or a stream or something like that. People always tend to, I don't know if it's because they don't like me or what it is, but I'm sorry if you don't like me. I hope you learn something either way. And if you dislike my videos, it's okay because it still benefits me. <laughs> so now I'm going to sew these two seams with a 5 8 seam allowance. So I did those seams off camera and now I'm going to work on the waistband and I'm going to put it right sides down on my ironing board and then I'm going to fold up the unnotched edge and do a 5 8 hem at the top. So I'm just going to iron that into place. Sometimes um, I'll take like a piece of cardboard and I'll cut it to the hemline that I want so like you know five eighths and then you can tuck it under your fabric and then just line up that raw edge with your cardboard and that makes things go pretty fast because you can just iron on top of your on the cardboard okay so now I'm going to take the waistband and I'm going to line up the notches on the base of the skirt with the notches on the bottom of the waistband and that's really helpful because when it comes to the back, this is, this comes over about a half an inch, but then the other piece is over like a, a good portion. So to be able to gauge that without having the notches would be a little bit difficult. And then it does tell you to lay the seams flat. So you can press those if you like. But of course, if you are doing this pattern, <laughs> then you'll do exactly as I do, but if not, then... I mean, I'm sure that m most of the patterns like this will... Cause this is pretty... You know, it's a pretty popular skirt. It's not like this is some sort of, you know, old style new skirt or something. This is definitely a, you know, a staple skirt.
see how on the back then this goes over a good amount so flatten the seam So yeah, I'm going to make this for my daughter and then hopefully she'll wear it when we're on vacation down in sunny Florida. It's getting cold around here in Ontario. So hopefully this will fit her now and then next summer. So I'm going to sew this around first so you're kind of you I'm making it like it's binding and then after you're gonna fold it over and then stitch it again okay so now my skirt is has a waistband so you're supposed to press or I'm supposed to press that and then it's gonna fold down and then cover that seam. And then you can top stitch that down. And then I can. <laughs> I'm talking as if you guys are following the same pattern, but. I'm just gonna pretend. Mm -hmm. So cute though, I love the cones. So it says I have to hang this overnight before I before I hem it. I know that that's for knit fabrics, but I don't know if that's for all fabrics. I'm gonna have to Google that because I know that the fabric can distort. You have to line it up. If you line it up perfectly on that seam, then when you go to top stitch it, it will be perfect. And you'll top stitch it like two millimeters away from the edge. So cute. I really hope she wears it because she's not a she's not a super girly girl so she's not like you know my niece she has to wear dresses all the time she loves dresses but Yanka is kind of like a you know I need to move around I need to do things I need to be comfy and I need to wear you know leggings and stuff and if I put um, jeans on her she's like oh I can't move <laughs> So, but because we're going on vacation, maybe she will be more willing. How cute is this though? Like, I can't even handle it. Oh, <laughs> it almost looks like it's a double comb. But doesn't that look so adorable? I hope it fits. It looks big, but I don't know. We'll see.